Welcome to The Interesting Podcast, episode number 158. This episode is with the powerhouse of a human being, Alex McKenna. You might know her best as the actor who brought to life Sadie Adler in Red Dead Redemption 2. But you're about to know her from a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, We talk about her actually being from L.A., going to school abroad to study neuroscience, auditioning as a child, getting a scar from a baby kangaroo, moving to New York, getting starstruck while working on Legend of Korra, her many fantastic projects she's worked on, what it means to go full Sadie, and so much more. This woman is a delight, and you are in for a treat, my friends. So, without further ado... Please enjoy this episode of The Interesting Podcast, number 158, with Alex McKenna. Theme song time. my dogs if you hear them bark at any point because they like to be included it's a whole thing that's okay so. that's okay what are, <laughs> what are their names uh Tulula is my Ooh. my little nearly 15 year old yorkshire terrier oh. and it's gerald is the rescue she picked out uh <laughs> he's a chihuahua and he's almost 15 as well i love it is it now the real question is is this like a cuddle chihuahua or is this like a guard dog chihuahua the snuggliest little yeah. angel. Yeah. I mean, you know, will he get his little ridge back up when he? <laughs> Absolutely. Sure. You know, they weren't called land sharks for nothing. True. True. That's yeah. funny. I. You know what? I. So I grew up with chihuahuas, and they were always the best. Like always, but every other chihuahua I've met is like would kill you. So it's yeah. nice to hear there's other nice ones out there. No, he's, he's phenomenal. I got really good advice from, uh, it was like one of my first apartments when I moved back from college and the guy down the hall had three chihuahuas. And when Tallulah picked out this tiny chihuahua, and at the time this was like, I, I was saying, I can't be a blonde actress in Los Angeles with a York and a chihuahua. <laughs> like this cannot be my life. Sure. No, I wouldn't want to hang out with me. I'm, I'm judging <laughs> you, you know, cause everybody on the cover of every magazine had their like little pocket dogs. And when we went to the rescue, I was like, Tallulah, Lou, this is on you. You got to You got to pick out like something a little like fugly. Give us some like street. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we life. went back three times. It was gangbusters. Like they, they're <laughs> soulmates meant to be. So he told me that the best way to get a, essentially snuggly chihuahua is when they're young, you basically like almost like with your, with your lips sort of like grab their fur around their face and sort of like like kind of just in order to not get them to be nippy and mean and you just you know you're constantly rubbing them and just like showing them that you are you know you are the alpha and um by putting your face in their face and constantly just sort of like nibbling on them they uh yeah he's just a he's a little angel that's so smart that makes so much sense we had like we so I've got a pug, and uh, oh, he, he turns he turns a year old on Sunday. Oh, you're a new papa! I know it's uh it's been a learning experience. <laughs> <laughs> My wife yeah, and I uh, didn't think we wanted children beforehand, and now we're pretty sold on not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's, it's a lot so, of work. So much work, but we learned like because we we play with his feet a ton. Just because I mean, mm-hmm. look at him. How do you not? And uh, when he goes to the vet now and they like go to trim his nails and stuff, they're like, he's so cool about it because you've been touching his feet this whole time. I was like, oh, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, Yeah, it's wild. Dogs are the best. They really are. I need them. I need them. And you're you're one of the few people I know that's actually from L.A. Yes. Born and raised. It is. I'm a unicorn. It's a strange thing. And you survived. though. (laughs) <laughs> <You know? laughs> yes. Yes. I actually think, and you know, I love my home city. Don't get me wrong. I have a lot of, a lot of LA pride, but I always take it as a high compliment when people are like, you're from New York, right? I'm like, yeah. Hey, <laughs> yeah. I'll give it to you a hundred percent, especially. And you can claim the transplant because you lived in New York a while. So I, like, did, uh-huh. I did. I did. 
I did for, for quite some time. And I've also lived, you know, I went to school in the Midwest, then I went to school in England and I've, I've been oh, fortunate what? enough to, to take some time in other places to, um, you know, yeah, I think it's important to leave home. And then if you return, you you're more fully, fully developed in the sense that you've had other experiences rather than just, you know, what, what's familiar. Yes. Uh, so, you know, yeah. A hundred percent. Grateful for, and, and, you know, there is no place like home, but also there's no place like being out of your comfort zone. And yes. I think it's supremely important. hundred percent. Tra- traveling is good for you. I tell everyone that like, you just, you need to, you need to realize there's, there's a world. Yeah. It's pretty cool. There's some, there's oh. some pretty neat stuff out there. It's, yeah. it's yeah. Spectacular. That was one of the greatest things about being a student abroad was I had a student visa and nice. thus had all of these discounts and was able to like hop on these terrifying little tin cans in the sky, <laughs> um, Ryan air. And I feel like yes. there was another one that was just, I mean, it's truly you, you applaud when you land because you're yeah. like, how did it happen? Oh my God. <laughs> oh, we survived. <laughs> that's right. That's right. It's me and four people and a chicken. How? Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. truly. And then, you know, you stay in your hostels and, and you yes. have your, very, very uh, specific budget and uh-huh. learn a lot. Absolutely. What, what's your favorite place you've been outside? Oof. I know, right? Okay. That's, that's a hard question. I'll give I, you a couple. I'll give you a couple. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, my favorite place probably in the entire world uh, is Italy. Probably Ooh. Sicily is just so magical, Interesting. so beautiful it was such a crossroads for so many different cultures that it had been colonized like so many times that the food there is just so special with spices that you don't ordinarily find in Italy. Yeah. Um, And, you know, the Mediterranean sea and I, we just, we vibe. Yeah. So I'm into that. Yeah. So that's, that's, I mean, a top place. Uh, I actually think one of the most interesting, challenging incredible places was India. Oh, cool. Um, truly just, you know, so it was just a beautiful place with beautiful people. And I, I had a really special time there. I look forward to going back. Yeah. Um, And then, I mean, you know, uh, there's a reason everybody wants to go to Paris. It's, it's, spectacular you know yeah. like it's not <laughs> it, you know it's it's just a special place I know what I mean? like I, yeah you know, there's Man. a reason it's popular what about you what are you what are your favorite places I I mean Ireland my oh. heart's my heart's there it Love was one it, it was one of those things I did like a full trip like it was like a week and a half and saw all of it because wow. I like you said specific budget hostels same thing yeah. like okay. landed in Dublin Went southwest to Port McGee, up to Galway, then to mm-hmm. Donegal, to Belfast, back into Dublin. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's one of those things. Like when, I don't know if it's like heritage or just something like, oh, right. But it was a spiritual connection walking through like Tullymore Forest and was like, oh, right. These are where my ashes are going. <laughs> you know? Oh, man, absolutely. I actually, I mean, I've got some some Irish heritage as well. And, and it's interesting because... Uh, There's a lot of talk, a lot of lore, let's say, you know, there's um, uh, India and Nepal have some like the oldest, oldest monasteries uh, to date. And then there's Ireland that have places that date back like earlier than the pyramids. So it is a, that is a very, very special place. I thought the cliffs of Moore were one of the breathtaking things I've ever experienced in my life. Yep. Um, Yep. Oh man, I can't wait to go to go back to Ireland. I I did a 10 day tour and we did the same thing where we were just like in, in these, you know, tour buses and on a very specific budget. (laughs) And, uh, you know, again, the people there were just so welcoming and wonderful and yeah. Yeah. There's best. I truly, I mean, it's, that's what I hope to encourage or like anybody who's listening, if you can travel, I know it's been COVID and that's been hard, but hopefully people will, once they're, you know, feeling safe and good and can get back out there, just I urge everyone to go immerse yourself in other cultures and think of yourself as a traveler and not a tourist because yes. that's the best way yes. to go anywhere. 
Agreed. Actually experience it like for real, for real. Get in there. Yeah. Yeah. Make an itinerary, but also be open to magic because yep. that's what happens when you travel and you're open. If you talk to the locals and, and people who, you know, people want to share their experience of their life where they live often. Yes. And so, you know, if you show genuine interest, people are like, wait, let me show you this thing that you would never find in your, you know, Tom, what, what are the guides that are even out now? What, you can't Google it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> back in my day before the Google, Way back we, when. Had, <laughs> we had these things that you bought and you looked in them and that's how you went around. Fought yeah. or something <laughs> or other, Lonely Planet. Yeah. That's what we use. <laughs> For all those youngins out there, I'm sure you've never heard of MapQuest, but no. it's how you figured out how to get places. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, that and Map... a Tom's Guide, at least in the States. <laughs> MapQuest was how you found the back entrance because it never took you to the front <laughs> one. <laughs> so true. Oh, the amount of times. It's like, this is definitely where it is. You're like, oh, no, you went, you went, you went the back way. Oh, okay. oh, right. Sure. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. Uh, things people don't know. What, what were you studying? You said you're abroad? Yes. I, uh, well, I went to, to college and, and left a television show that I was on um, and decided to study neuroscience primarily. Oh, and then ended up, uh, thanks to a guest speaker who came to our school uh, named Oliver Sachs, who oh. is just a phenomenal everything. Researcher, neuroscientist, author. Uh, mm -hmm. He actually is the person who did and well wrote the book. The, the, it's, a, it's about his experience um, helping people wake up from, well, you know what? I'm not going to ruin it for anybody. It's incredible. <laughs> it's, but it, but it, it ended up being a film called Awakenings uh, with Robin Williams. And oh. uh, Oliver Sacks is just, you know, he's got a great book called Musicophilia. And, um, you know, he's incredible. He passed away Oh man, I'm terrible with chronology, but not that many years ago. I mm -hmm. think. Uh, but he came to my school wearing this shirt that said heavy metal rules for a science nerd oh, like me, it just cracked me up. <laughs> and uh, he spoke and I had this sort of aha moment that while I love everything to do with the brain and everything about being a doctor, like nothing could make me my stomach turn. Yeah, um, yeah it turned out that I didn't want to be in school for that long to be in one place. It's just not in my nature. That's fair. And so I was like, wait a second, I can write about this stuff. I can, I like, I want to play a doctor in something. I want to, there you, go. There you, you know, go. I can do the research and I can write and I can have more experiences telling stories and reaching people that way. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's usually in part to Oliver Sacks. And so I, in order to get my English credits, uh, that I would need because I was well into the end of my sophomore year, I got accepted to this program at Exeter university and went there for a year and, and got my English and film credits and continued with my sociology minor. And that was a really special time. Wow. That sounds like a lot of right brain stuff going on. <laughs> you know, I, listen, I believe in balance. So yeah. as Brian balance, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, that's wild. What a, it seems like a random thing to get into though, for especially somebody like grew up performing to be a science brained. What was it something that like you took to pretty easily or you had to work at it? Um, that's a great question. I, realized I had a, a love for chemistry in high school. So oh. I was always, you know, very much head of the class with the English and the this, and then math was really difficult for me. Right. Uh, and once one of my teachers actually approached my parents saying like, I think she might have a learning disability actually. And oh. I was so upset. This is like pre it being like, okay. And cool. Sure. And you know, uh, <laughs> I remember being just devastated and telling my parents, like, I'm, I'm not stupid. I just, you know, I just, when I get on the test and it's my brain scrambles, but, but I know what I'm doing. And yeah, my, my mother at the time was like, yes, that that's exactly what they're saying. Could we just, could we just take these tests? And, 
see what happens. And I was like, I'm going to fucking show everybody. Yeah, I'll show you a test. <laughs> so I took these tests. And back then, again, I think um, diagnoses for things have shifted a lot. But mm-hmm. before it was a wee bit more mainstream in, in the way that it is now, there were extensive tests. I'm talking three days of just everything from clicking a button on a computer to uh, these picture games that you had to put in order and that were timed. Oh yeah. Like wild, wild stuff. So I think, um, that experience, uh, when I was to finish the story diagnosed with a particular brand of ADHD, where I, Mm -hmm. my brain basically went so fast that I wasn't able to, I didn't, I didn't have the tools yet to, um, figure out how I placed things. Sure. In, in my mind. And so, you know, there were bits of history, like again, chronology, not my strong suit, but I, I tell you everything in detail up to like what somebody wore and the kind of like things, obscure details that nobody would remember necessarily. Yeah. Like that's, it, it was just interesting. And it, it taught me a lot about my brain. And I think that's, you know, part of why when I got to college and I saw neurochemistry as an option and an elective to take, I was like that that's what I want. And again, growing up in a big city, you see a lot of mental illness, you see a lot of drug abuse, you see Uh a lot of addiction. And so, you know, all of it uh, sort of coalesced into this like genre of study that I could do, which was sure psychology, but also psychopharmacology. And and I was just really taken with it. Interesting. That makes a lot of sense. And also coincidentally, it would I imagine make you a better actor as well because you're learning about the inner workings is uh, on top of it all. Absolutely. I think, you know, my, my fascination and love of the brain uh, definitely has aided in, in how I approach characters and then minoring in sociology. It's like the way we exist within the world, which helps with my storytelling. And then English, you know, is as a subject like storytelling, it's, it's about right. it's the how vehicle. we express. And so uh it all made sense to me. <laughs> and <Yeah>. yet, <laughs> however, looking back, I wouldn't trade it for anything, but leaving a job and a career that was going well to take essentially four years off, <laughs> um, you know, in a really, really fickle business that yep. doesn't guarantee anything, even when you have momentum, but to take momentum and to thwart it was not <laughs> something I suggest for everybody. Sure. Um, <laughs> it makes solid starting the ball rolling a lot harder. And I feel like I've done that a ton of times. Like when I moved to New York and felt like I was just starting from scratch again and then moved back to LA and kind of starting from scratch again. <laughs> it's yeah. Just, it's uh yeah. Yeah. Being a, being an actor and a creative and a filmmaker is a, it's just, I envy those <laughs> with, uh, more secure career paths. Yeah. Right there with you. It's, it's, I mean, 20 years from now, it's going to be a disorder. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Being a creative. Well, that's, that's no. the joke, right? It gets yep. in your, it's in your veins and you're yeah. like, I can't it's full. I tried to leave. Like I thought I wanted to be a doctor yep. and um, nope, that that's, it's like nope. a really, really amazing when it's great and just so hard to navigate when it's not virus. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just, yeah. I totally agree. It's one of those things that like, I think you're just wired that way. You know what I mean? I feel like creative people, there's a thing where like you have to be creating. And when you're not, there's like a, you feel it like all the time. It's like part of your soul is dying. Yeah. Yeah. And I know recognize that sounds really dramatic, but hey, but it's true. (laughs) It's, It's absolutely for anyone that is creative. They know that feeling. We're like, ah, I don't need sleep. I need to make things. (laughs) Yep. Absolutely. It's wild. And you're one of the few people who can actually say you've been acting your entire life. Cause I know you started as a baby. Oh man. Yeah. What kind of baby classes did you go to? Well, that's (laughs) it. No, I just got thrown right in. Uh, My first commercial (laughs) was with Grace Jones in like a Honda it's like when they had their little scooters, a Honda scooter commercial. Oh, perfect. Um, and then, yeah. And then I think I did a few others and then would like model for Barbie and just do a whatever was, whatever we could get. 
uh, I suppose. And then I got the lead in the school play at five and then just kind of continued on. I think I got my first TV show at six or seven. Dude, that's not bad. You know, it's a funny <laughs> thing, but it, I, again, it's, it's something that was such a part of me that I wanted the opportunity to explore and find out if it was just something I loved to do or I wanted to do. And I know that's a, oh. a delicate, it's a delicate line because yeah. it makes me so, so happy. But, you know, again, growing up in Los Angeles, you get sort of pegged as one thing. And I've totally. always like bucked at that. I don't Good. like, it. I don't like it, but you know, again, I see my friends who had one singular clear vision and they're thriving because they didn't get distracted <laughs> by anything else. True. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. It, it was. So I'm, I'm curious then if you're starting so young, how did you view it? Like, was it, did you see it as a job? Yeah, I actually did. I was very fortunate, though, that I had parents that basically said, if ever I didn't want to do it, great. You know, oh, that cool. was that was it. And it was my after school activity. So I went to real I went to public school and then I went to Hell a yeah. private school that would allow me to leave um, for months at a time. Sure. And I, you know, had to get my homework done and I had to get good grades. And if I did that, then acting was my after school activity. Oh, and cool. when I didn't want to do something and wanted to go to prom, I, everyone was really on board with that. So, you know, I was very, very fortunate, but you know, you're a little adult when you're on set, you are, you have a responsibility right. and a duty and you, you know, you're protected in the sense that you have your kids can only work a certain amount of hours. You have sure. to get your, your school time in or your whatever rest time in. and um, you know, you're very fortunate that way, but I always, I always understood the responsibility of what I was doing and, and being on a television show or, or doing theater, it takes a village. And I think I understood that I did not want to let anyone down. So right. being a consummate professional, yes, it's a job, but it's also fun. Sure. That's another fine line. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's crazy. Yeah, I always wondered that with like child actors because it's like you you kind of have to grow up quickly because you're in a work environment. But it's it's a yeah, it's got to be got to be a fine line to walk. Yeah, I think I, I don't think it's for everybody, and I think you know, was, uh, <laughs> I had a writing <laughs> teacher ask me like, "Would you let your kids do it?" And this is when I was in my early twenties and sort of just coming out of college and refinding who I was as an artist and as an actor because you know. When you're young, you're, you're playing make believe. It's not like I had a lot of like quote unquote craft yet. Right. I hadn't read, you know, Strindberg and Ibsen and and Chekhov yet. Like sure. I wasn't approaching what I was doing from a, a technical standpoint. Right. And um, I think, yeah, I, I think it's it's you're so much of how you approach your life when you're young is how your parents frame it. Oh, good point. Good point. And so again, I was so, so fortunate that, you know, of course your, your professional tantrums are allowed. <laughs> sure. But also, you know, if I didn't want to do it, then I, there wasn't pressure. I, I didn't have, you know, cra crazy stage parents. Uh, but, but this early writing teacher, said, do you, would you let your kids do it? And it like flew out of my mouth. And I just went, nope. <laughs> and I found it startling because I have the best memories from being on set. Right. Like I, I cherish them. I love them. It like right now in being in the middle of not working, it's all that I crave, yeah. but it, it was fascinating. Cause I, at that point was just, it breeds this like confidence and simultaneous insecurity because right. like, well, who am I without this thing? And I was allowed to like play sports. I was allowed to go to school. I wasn't, you know, working all the time necessarily, but mm -hmm. I've, I, you know, so many kids that I grew up with being in those audition rooms essentially got eaten alive. Like, I don't know where sure. they went. They were so, so successful for, for a period of time. And then they, you know, spiraled into, some kind of drug abuse or addiction or right 
just sort of did, fell off the map. I, I don't know. Sure. And then they were really, really successful and doing incredibly well. So I don't know if that, <laughs> has, you it's know, the whole spectrum. Such is life, right? <laughs> such is life. Exa exactly. I, I'm wondering, when was like, do you remember the first time that you went in for a job and it was because you got started so young? There's a lot of like your parents bring you to this thing. Do you remember there was a first job that like you decided that you really wanted it? Was there like a mental shift? Be like, all right, oh. I'm in charge now. Oh, that's interesting. I mean, I, I can remember the times that I really wanted something and my heart got broken. Yeah, I mean, on sure. multiple occasions. And it wasn't because my parents wanted me to get it. It was because I, I wanted to be Harriet the Spy. Ooh. And it was between me and the girl who got it. Sure. And I wanted, I wanted, because I read those books growing up. Yeah. And I want, I, I knew her. She, she was me. I wanted to be her. And so, you know, there was another one where uh, I think it was called Andre. It had a seal in it. Oh, and sweet. I, got to, I loved animals. And so getting to work with animals would have been great. And that did, it went to the other girl. There was a lot of early days of my life. I can't even tell you where it was between me and another girl. And so, you know, that almost tasting it and then just fully having your heart broken. Yeah. Um, but I, I uh, yeah, I don't. I think I adopted it, probably in my teens a more, you know, hey, if it's mine, it's mine. If it's not, it's not, which is Hell why yeah. I couldn't understand sometimes when I'd be in audition rooms, the uh, the energy of the other females being like so horrifically competitive. Right. And I just remember thinking, A, I'm so grateful that I have other interests and in other things. Also, B, what are we doing? Like, if it's mine, <laughs> man, it's not yours. Yes. You know, like, sure. We're, we're both, you know, similar statures and maybe a sil similar complexion for the daughter of, Bob, but, but like at the end of the day, it's, you know, it's either going to be me or it's it not. And why yeah. wouldn't we champion each other? It's like, I hope everyone is working hard and, you know, did their, did their due diligence and learning their lines and prepping. And, you know, it's, I think hardest when you see somebody that just gets something and oh yeah, it it's a quote unquote name or somebody's dazzled by something and, and you see that it's sort of, it's not deserved. And that, that used to get to me, I think more so sure. than, than now. Um, but you know, that makes sense. It, it, that's a much healthier way to go into auditions as well. I, I learned that the hard way. <laughs> Did you? Oh no, yeah. were you really, really competitive? It's one of those things like, cause that you're kind of almost subconsciously trained to think it is a competition, you know, where you go right. in and there's a bunch of people that look similar to you. But then I, I learned a few years ago just to be like, the key is to do your best because, and it sounds cliche, but you cannot do better than your best. So if you go in there and you do your best, you can walk away being like, there's nothing I could have done more to get that part. So either I'm going to get it or someone else is going to get it. And that's just how it is. You know, it's like you have to almost separate yourself from the process to survive. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, that's the hardest thing. I mean, I would say our job as actors and performers is weathering the rejection. And yes. when you work, you work for free. But totally. when you get paid, you don't get paid to work because we would do it for free. You get paid for the in-between time. You yes. get paid for all the times you were told you're not attractive enough. You're too attractive. You're not all American enough. You're too all American. You're too, like, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I've been told everything under the sun. I bet. Well, you're, you know, you're not like the hot girl, but you're not like quirky. You're, <laughs> you know, your voice is really weird. I'm like, okay. Uh, thanks. thanks. <laughs> uh, you know, like truly everything under the sun. And, and my mom had a really great saying where she's like, listen, if you believe one thing they say, and this honestly goes with praise as well. Like, if you know, you did a good job. Great. But if somebody's telling you that you're amazing or you're, you know, queen shit of fuck mountain, like yeah. then you also have to believe every time somebody says it's garbage, you're trash, you know? Yeah. So like, don't, don't do that. Yeah. Don't do that. And so if you can know that there will always be something that either, so, and, and it can literally be the same thing that somebody will say no to, and another person will say yes, then just take it with a grain of salt and do your fucking work. Keep your head down. If you, if you still love what you do, then keep doing it. But if it starts to become too hard or hurts you, 
you know, so much in your ego, in your soul, in your whatever, then find another fucking path because it's not worth it. Yes. hundred percent agreed. It, you know, for every 100 auditions, if you're lucky, you get one. It's like, you have to know that going in. Oh yeah. <laughs> this no, is an the endurance odds are game. Against you. The odds are against <laughs> you. I have a few friends that, you know, started young and, and, um, did really, really well. And I, you know, I wouldn't be human if there weren't moments where I'm like, oh, of course, that looks so nice to have things. Yeah. Just <laughs> Man, I want that, you know, but at the same time, I'm so grateful for the struggle because I can tell you, I will never take any job I have for granted. You know, it's, it's, and, and, and that's not something everyone can say. Like I, I truly am. Some yeah. of my closest friends I made because even though I was guest starring and I was working and I was doing voiceover and uh, I, you know, wanted a particular lifestyle. I lived in Los Angeles. I wanted a nice apartment. And so I worked in a bar for five and a half years as a bartender. Hell yeah. And those people, you know, are, are joys of my life. We're at my wedding, we're at my parents' funerals. Like they're, they're heart people for me. And that never would have happened if I didn't have to struggle in the art that I love, you know? Yes. Totally agreed. And you can feel that as well. I, I find that I connect with people much more that have been through some shit. <laughs> oh yeah. There's like, there's that, oh, right. Scars. Same. Cool. Yep. All right. We're going this way. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I mean, you know, I do think it, exactly to what you just said, our experience, our trials, our tribulations, our grief, honestly, connects oh, us for real. for real on a level on a level that, that I think so much of us in this society don't have the permission to connect around. Yep. I'm, I'm actually working uh, on a podcast that I'm, I'll be excited to hopefully yeah, yeah. Release here uh, called good grief. And it is about Beautiful. the gains of loss. Incredible. You, you know what? I'm going to send you something later on. Uh, okay. I, I did a Western earlier this year and it's literally about that. It's Ooh. just, it's just a guy. It's literally just a guy and his horse talking about grief and survivor's guilt and like people he's buried and then keep going. I think you'd like it. Beautiful. I mean, you just said a bunch of things I love. Yeah. So yeah. You know, <laughs> examining grief, horses, Westerns, yep. and you know, keep just the resilience to continue. Yeah, exactly. very, very, very into that. I have a feeling you might enjoy this. <laughs> yeah, please, please do send. I, I do love to hear as well that you love animals because how cool was shooting Joey? <laughs> I know your work, Alex. <laughs> I, I'm so impressed on the oh, research you've already done. You I'm going to have to pick your brain about all these things that you found. <laughs> um, I, I actually still have a scar on my knee. No from, way. Uh, the baby Joey. A, really? A tiny angel kangaroo. Yes. Oh, yes. That's amazing. Um, and everybody thought it would be. So we, we filmed in Australia and mm -hmm. a lot of <laughs> a lot of our crew was South African. And so they oh. spoke other languages. And so I think I got taught like probably 15 or 20 swear words. And so oh, sweet. <laughs> um, yeah, which I won't say because it's been again, this is I mean, shit, how sure. I mean, Oh, was that 20, 20? if you're going to do it, do it right, Alex. <laughs> right. I would need to, I would really need to check. Uh, but they convinced me because I started bleeding that I was going to get tetanus. And I don't think they realize that like, it's actually not super funny to do that to an 11 or 12 year old. No, girl. that's a child. Um, so I was hysterical and actually ended up to I, I ended up having to get, I think they took me to an emergency room and, and I got a, um, a tetanus shot, which hurt, oh, no. turns out. Uh, yeah, they terrified me though. But like, also well, this yeah. Joey, I mean, what? Like, why would they do that? <laughs> like, it wasn't a wild animal. It was a, you know, it, <laughs> a, to the most of a tiny kangaroo can be trained. Like, was it trained? Right. But I had a great time. I got to work with Ed Bagley Jr., who I actually yes. got to work with twice. Right on. Um, he's just phenomenal. And uh, I mean, I loved I, I got to do two back to back movies in Australia and just, you know, I, I was very, very fortunate. It was it was a great project to be on. Yeah. 
it was so like what is a what does a joey feel like texture wise i'm like kind of like a koala no i uh, <laughs> right it, right i know i know that is. <laughs> it's so that's such a good question because there's almost like a deer like quality to them but oh, deers are much softer right. so like their fur i don't know like that's that's like a like a carpety bunny I don't oh know. okay like, no that, that makes sense that makes sense okay okay that's, that's what i recall like I, their fur is really specific and i'm not sure that how does I, it compare to it. like a chinchilla it's so not as soft okay got it got but it. that maybe that density oh interesting okay okay see these are things i'm curious about yeah, yeah I, no, I, that's a really I, good question. I've definitely never been asked that. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm here for. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> I've <laughs> pet, I've pet grown kangaroos, but I've never, I've never held a joey before. I've held a sloth, and that Ooh. was, that was like a wet carpet. That was an interesting thing. And when you pass him around, he would just sigh. So you're like, <sighs> you're like, oh, oh, look at this guy. Personality. Yeah. Honestly, sloths are so cool looking. They're the coolest. And they're really slow. So it's like they're not gonna surprise <laughs> you. Totally. <laughs> if you get cut by a sloth, that is your fault. <laughs> Where are you from originally? Uh originally North Carolina, but I, I live and grew up in Florida. Okay. Yeah, yeah. When I it's if it's really early in the morning or if I get really angry, the accent comes back. Um, or if or if I'm with family. It's one of those things as well. Like you go home and five minutes later, you're just like, oh, right. I have an accent. Yep. I remember yeah. this guy. <laughs> uh, two of my my dearest friends are from North Carolina and uh, they're both from slightly different places, but mm -hmm. it's exactly right. Like a little, little too much of the hooch yep. or a little, yep. little bit of a, a, you know, little red flare in the temper and hello. Yep. Yep. So it's there. North Get rid Carolina of all the G's. Way. You don't yeah. need them. They're just gone. <laughs> <laughs> Enunciation out the window. We don't need it anymore. Yeah. yeah, that's how it goes. It's anytime someone, I can actually usually tell when someone is from North Carolina by how they say morning. Morning. So they, yeah, they're like morning. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. what part? <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Accents. They're a good time. Oh. They're good oh, time. they're some of my favorite things. I got really into learning phonetics for a hot minute there. And uh, one of my, you know, greatest acting teachers said that it was important for every young artist to figure out what their blood memory was because you need to explore and master those accents. Ooh, and I cool. found it to be so mind blowing, honestly, and, and not always, but I was in class because I, you know, if you're, if you're an artist out there, I think classes are really important and it's not to, yes, shape you necessarily it's to explore you yes so you know i i just remember being so hungry for information and i think i was i was searching so much that that i almost let the classes uh the classes run the show rather than sure learn within them but i think that's something that just comes with you know time age and experience definitely uh, but uh, yeah i had to do a uh polish jewish accent oh. and i'm thinking like fuck like basically we like pulled straws for these two parts <laughs> you know? and it came down to like who was older and i was older by like a few months and i was like oh my god i'm playing the like auschwitz survivor like oh, this, no. this other girl gets to play like an american from fucking brooklyn like <laughs> what how did that happen like i got some homework brooklyn. i could do brooklyn <laughs> like why am i getting you know, the, oh man. And <laughs> I, it was, it was bizarre. It was like a possession. Like yeah. I had, I think I listened to a few YouTube videos and it was like, I had been speaking that way my whole, like I could have full, it was so wild. Wow. And yeah, right around that time I did 23 and me and lo and behold, I was like 50% Ashkenazi Jewish. And what? that was, that was news to me. And, you know, part of being Ashkenazi is having Polish roots. And I was like, Oh, wow. That the blood memory. Right. 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 Yeah. Right. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. Like I can do, you know, Irish, English, French, you know, all of that. And then Polish Jewish, like what? <laughs> Where did Where this come from? from? <laughs> I didn't even have to work for it. That's so <laughs> nuts to me. 
you're a, you're a sleeper agent when it comes oh, to it. <laughs> yeah. Well, you just sleep rage. I, there, there were, there were moments where I was like, should I just join the CIA? <laughs> I feel like acting has been slow and I've got you know, this like, you know, bag of tricks now. That's yeah, true. That's true. Um, you know how to commit, you know, oh, yeah. you know how to stay in character. I'll, I'll, oh, yeah. I'll give you a reference hundred percent. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, don't have a record knock on wood. That's right. Uh, There's still time. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I've come this far. Come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. I'm glad that like your juvenile record goes away when you turn 18. But, Dude, um, <laughs> okay. Fun well, fact for another time. Me you thinks. know, just saying, if there are any kids out there? Just kidding. That is not. I didn't really. Nope. Anyway, so you're from LA. <laughs> what was what was New York <laughs> like when you moved there? Was there a culture shock involved in that? Because it's a different world. I, you know, I had spent so much time in New York. Uh, growing up, I, I always loved uh, the theater. And smart. then I, um, as soon as I got out of college, I mean, I used to visit New York and, and high school and go see theater. And I had friends that were at NYU. And uh, then when I got out of college, I would go there all the time because I started studying on both coasts with the same teacher. I was just oh, cool. soaking up everything that, that he was doing. And then, you know, had the great privilege of, um, of helping out in the class and stage managing. So I sort of did like a work study and, uh, you know, got to spend a lot of time there, but New York does something to you. It, 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 it pushes you and it has the ability to break you. And then also will to that same degree, lift you up in ways that I've found no other city can. Oh, cool. I, I think, you know, it's, it's a very different pace. Uh, yes. Even the driving is different, you know, in, in LA, you're doing defensive driving in New York. <laughs> I always joke. It feels like I'm playing a video game. Yeah, that's fair. You have to be so, so present. I mean, there is no, you know, oh, let me just look at my phone at a light. Like, no, ma'am, no, sir, <laughs> no, them, no, 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 yep. no, you have to be so on guard and there aren't it's the wild west. There's, there's no rules. Like, yeah. I don't even know why they have lanes in the street. Like <laughs> it doesn't make any sense, but, um, no, truly it was, it's, I, I wouldn't take that time away, you know, for anything. It was so just character building and eye opening and wonderment. Yeah. Making was it was everything. I mean, I got to see incredible theater and dance and meet amazing people and just be blown away by the museums. And, you know, I mean, who knew that like going to the market was almost like fighting a war. <laughs> <laughs> you just come back, you know, arms cut up, dripping <laughs> in sweat, unsure of how you came out of the trenches, just like, I just, you know, and again, I, I, yeah, it was wild. It was a wild <laughs> time, but you know, things that you would just take for granted. Like I've always had a car and you just put everything in the, not to sound like my Canadian husband, but boot of the car and you're right. like, oh, shit's in the trunk easy. Like, you know, hardest thing was like finding a parking spot. And that is not what going to the market in New York is. <laughs> it is a fucking experience. You have to wear helmets. Groceries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's nuts. What made you move back then? Uh, my mom wasn't well. She got ill. Oh, I'm sorry. So thank you. It was, um, you know, I, I was flying back and forth doing that, <laughs> what I always had quote unquote dreamed of that bi-coastal life, which was not in the version of the dream. Yeah. Uh, that I had. Sheesh. Uh, and I, yeah, I mean, it, it was, a, it was everything just sort of came together in this strange way where the uh, apartment I had been living in, the man who owned it needed to sell it. And been at there. the time it was pretty clear my mom wasn't doing super well. And we just made the decision to come back and um, allow me to take care of her. And uh, yeah, that's sort of, you know, and then again, like once you've lived in New York for X amount of years, and then you move to a place and you get more space and you are getting older, it's, it's a really hard thing to, I mean, I, I, if a job took me back to New York, I would be the happiest girl in the world, but sure. I don't know that I could do what I've now done so many times, which would be go 
spend so much money for not clearing the yeah. space <laughs> and yeah. so much work to, um, yeah, you know, and, and it turns out when somebody's ill and then they pass, like there's so much to do and so much to take care of. And I cannot have imagined doing that remotely. Oh man. Um, and now I'm, you know, it's coming up on five years, which blows my mind. I do not understand time, but it, yeah. uh, I, there's still, there's still stuff being done. And, and while it's now not a full-time job anymore, mm-hmm. um, there are just things that you can't do when you're not in the place you need to be. <laughs> Absolutely. Know? Absolutely. That I'm so sorry. That's, that's a lot. That is a lot. I feel like I've lived many lives. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can feel it. And I, I, I appreciate that because I find the most interesting people in the world are the same way, but it's, you don't get to choose the paths. That's the problem. <laughs> no, you can literally just choose how you walk through that fire. Absolutely. And I am very lucky that I have, you know, beautiful friends and, and chosen family and, and family yes. that uh, helped me do that with as much humor and grace as possible. That's incredible. That that makes all the difference. I I also love that like w- the way because your life has these all these different tracks and different things that you've done. It's so full of like different flavors. But your work is the same way. I mean, you've done theater, you've done TV, you've done. You were in Legend of Korra. That's yeah. Wild. You got I played Korra's mom. mom. What? Yeah. That what was are the odds. Oh man, <laughs> what a fucking job. Not I mean, it just you know. <sighs> Yeah, Nickelodeon, if you're listening, like, I just want to be back. I just want to be back <laughs> working for you because yes. it was, it's such a, such a good story. And the actors yes. were so phenomenal. The best. You know, I'm, I'm still friends with a couple of them. Like we just, and I didn't even do that many episodes. I think I did eight maybe. Sure. Um, But I, I, yeah, I, I just couldn't have, have been luckier. Um, the best. The best cast, the best show. It's the sequel to the greatest animated show of all time. It's nuts. Like okay. P- PJ Byrne has been on the show before. And PJ's my buddy. That's one of the people. And I'm like, we, yeah, I love PJ. Listen, he's the greatest, most fun person ever. It's mm-hmm. just, I, I don't think I've ever talked to anyone who can yes and as quickly and as hilariously <laughs> as he can. I was like, yeah, his, from his the opposite. Is like, it's, like, it's nuts. I was like, oh, yeah. oh, oh, we're doing this. All right, cool, 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 cool. Yeah. <laughs> The yeah, greatest. The I greatest. actually on that show had so I, I've only been starstruck maybe three or four times in, yeah. in my life. And so growing up in LA and like again being the business and and you know that's that's kind of saying a lot. And I think because it yeah. was always like, oh well, you know, everybody's a human and like uh, I, I don't know, or maybe it was a protection mechanism. I don't really, I don't really know. But sure. on that show was one of the first times that I've actually been just completely starstruck, dumbstruck, yeah. and did something that I never thought I would do where I asked somebody <laughs> for a picture. And, okay. What was it? Talk to me. It was, okay. Well, I'm just going to give you a little story before I, okay. maybe okay. you already know. Oh, all right, I'm, I'm in. Okay, so when you're working on an animated series, you sometimes get to work with the other actors in the same room, and sometimes it's just you in a booth saying your lines. Right. Ideally, you're doing it with the other actors because it feels more like a play that way. You're playing off each other. It's so awesome. Yes. So this was one of those days, and I go and sign my name into, you know, the little sign-in sheet. Mm-hmm. I'm writing Alex McKenna, and I look up, and I see the name Eve Marie Saint. <laughs> and I'm like, it doesn't even, it, it doesn't even process. Okay. That like, this is the woman whose films like shaped my love of film, you know, like I yeah. wrote papers yeah. on her film, <laughs> you know, like I just on the waterfront, are you joking me? But yeah. I'm not, none of this is like processing that. I'm like, even I was like, huh. And I, I just remember being like, yeah. Okay. Oh, totally. Amazing. You know, like you'd think IMDB would make somebody change their name, uh, you know, <laughs> but I guess there are, there's another like Alex McKenna or something. I don't know. Like, sure. Maybe. I know there are other Alex McKenna's out there because Not for long. Google alerts and one is a baseball <laughs> player and it's hilarious. But anyways, <laughs> um, 
I, I'm sitting there and, you know, I always bring my book to read because I love to read and, you know, half the time you're waiting around and that's just part of your job. And so you hurry up and wait is one of my favorite things to tell myself if I'm ever feeling antsy. Smart. And I look up and lo and behold, is he racing? What? And I just, I like, couldn't, I'm like looking at the sides and I was like, who the fuck is she? What? <laughs> so she plays my mom. <laughs> and I played Cora's mom. And I was like, <gasps> this lineage. <laughs> I fully, I mean, it's PS like the ugliest picture, but it's, it's one of my favorites. <laughs> the lighting was terrible. This is like, I think early days Instagram when I still thought that it was just like a, a um, like a, it wasn't a, a social thing. It was just a, a photo. Like a photo album yeah essentially with like some filters you know right. some like colored filters which were very big in 2011 yeah. uh <laughs> you know it was like we're like the burnt sides but yeah, anyway yeah, there I, you go. I fully after we finished working was like hi i'm so sorry to do this to you. <laughs> would you mind um taking a picture all three of us you know with you and me and uh, uh, could we and I just, like, I'm, so, <laughs> I'm so bright red i think in it and i'm just <laughs> shit eating grin and i was like this is one of the coolest things that's ever happened and i like wasn't able to articulate it because i was so starstruck yeah. Uh, just how meaningful I think now, you know, again, this was many moons ago, I would be able and I also recognize that actually when you come at somebody, it doesn't matter, quote unquote, how famous or how whatever, if you truly appreciate their art, and you can do it in that way, and not in a way that is like, celebrity chasing, if that makes sense. Yes, that yeah. will always be meaningful. But yeah. I just, I just was so <laughs> unused to being thrown off that that truly uh that, yeah. <laughs> that I wasn't able to articulate anything in any sort of nice beautiful way <laughs> I just completely seized up and was like picture somebody please <laughs> <laughs> to be fair if you're gonna do it for anyone that's a pretty good pick oh man you know, I feel like that warrants it a little bit what was cute was that afterwards Janet Varney whispered to me thank you so much for asking her <laughs> was like, can you send it to me and I was like oh my god yes because right. you know I was like am I embarrassing myself like right no you just did I, at least then I didn't know now again with with some more age and wisdom I'm I'm you know I would have no problem saying that to anybody that I I respected but this was around the same time I think I was also starstruck by one of the very few people who was a a choreographer and just like I couldn't speak words I just yeah. I, it, all all of the English language just escaped me <laughs> <laughs> I love that that's the magic though because it's the magic of art they created something that affected you and then that interaction will affect them because there's that love for no for lack of a better word oh yeah and uh, yeah true admiration and inspiration where you yes. just you know have like uh, films and and books have saved me in moments same you know? it's such a powerful medium and i think that i didn't fully understand that when i went went away to college to like leave it sure. i just i again it's it's easy to take something for granted that you don't have a perspective on yes and it's how i feel about traveling at home you know you don't realize just how beautiful experience of the familiar, what you know, is until you get some distance from it. Totally. I totally agree. It's, you know, something else that people will appreciate or should appreciate because it's really, really good. Hmm. Bear with us. Oh, thank you. Listen, that is a gem of a movie and everyone needs to watch it because it is so funny. I was, I don't know what I was expecting when I walked in. I'm like, okay, it's black and white. <laughs> The synopsis is like, there's a ravaging bear outside. I'm like, all right, cool. Let's sit down for some horror. It is so funny. And yeah. you are so good in it. And so is everyone really. It's, it's what a wild ride. It, it to this date is probably one of my favorite films I've ever done because we, oh man, I mean, what a fun character that I get. Oh, to play. the best. 
And every actor was there to just tell this wild little tale with this, you know, up and coming young director, young writer. Um, I mean, truly just also an amazing humans came to, I mean, before COVID, my last big birthday bash, like I, I, I maintain that I always take away some real gems of relationships from every project I do. Yes. And uh, yeah, yeah. Will, Will Stribling is a, is a really special director. And um, man, we just, we had a blast on that thing. We went out into the Poconos for a oh, month cool. some change and shot this tiny little indie. And I remember thinking like, this is well-written. This is really this is really funny, yeah. you know, like, I don't understand where it came from. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, like from the mind of, huh? Right. But <laughs> it, it just, it really, really, but it was such a fun character and, and Christy Cross Romano is amazing. Right. And, and every, you know, Mark Jude Sullivan, like also have seen him in theater. He's so talented. Everybody was just, Cheyenne Jackson, like, can we just bow down? Yes. What, what a human. Ooh. What a human. And Insane. also, actually, I can say this, absolutely, my favorite sex scene to date. Yeah, fair, <laughs> fair. <laughs> it's so I mean, funny. The bear has to watch. Oh, it's, man. Oh, it's be man. Beautiful. That, that whole movie. And, like, such quick jokes that I was laughing out loud several times because they're the type of humor that, like, catches you off guard. You're like, oh, this is really funny. And you're like, oh, oh, all right. I see it. I see it. This is good. It's, it's you know, it's a, it's a horror film with <laughs> that's, that's, uh, you know, uh, shot in black and white, which was yep. a ballsy choice. Yep. And it's a serious comedy. And you just, I mean, Russ Nickel and, and Will, I think, developed it together and wrote it together. And, and Russ Nickel has like, his sense of humor is so fantastic, but it's like unassuming. Yeah. <laughs> and then Will is like much drier. Um, but the two of them together, I mean, they just put together just this, you know, all-star comedic cast. And we, I mean, I have some crazy stories. We actually had to shut down production because bears had infiltrated the sink. <laughs> and... P.S. This was during a day where I am not only dressed up like a bear in the middle of the fucking <laughs> woods, but also, little known fact, uh, blood in black and white is actually typically done by chocolate sauce because it looks, oh. it, it, the, the tones are right. It just, it looks the best. Um, bears, I don't know, maybe you guys remember this, love honey. <laughs> they love sweet shit. I am covered in <laughs> chocolate dressed as a bear in the middle of the woods. It was, it was a whole, I mean, yeah. Bad I, you I, wanted, I, Alex. It was just, I'm, I'm very lucky. We did actually, and this was like, you know, bless, bless our first AD, bless everybody. But like, we didn't exactly have the meeting that perhaps we should have. Because I remember somebody screaming bear and us all just running into the cars and locking the door, <laughs> which I'm pretty sure is the exact opposite of what you're supposed to do. Mind you, we did have a really important bear safety meeting the next day. Oh, perfect. <laughs> um, after Better late we had than watched, ever. Yeah, exactly. After we had watched the bear pick up backpacks oh, no. and just, you know, like tear them to shreds. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. That, I'm so glad you enjoyed that film. I, I, I really, really love that film. And I, you know, yeah, I, I'm, that makes me very happy. I, I actually, I can genuinely say that I, I, I'm not just saying this because I feel like I know you now, but <laughs> I, I've genuinely loved every performance I've seen of yours. And that includes like uh, the short films you've done. So like with oh. We and like City of Lights and like Standby. All of it is so good. And like, I'm at the point now where I'm like dissecting performances that I watch. Oh. You have such a range. It's crazy. Thank you. Like, I don't know where you're pulling this stuff from, but it's it, the thing that you want to do. I find is when you make art, you want people to feel whether yeah. it's being uh, sad or happy or uh, tense, whatever it is, if they're feeling the art is good in my opinion. Absolutely. And like, 
with each one of those, I felt, I mean, with like, with we, that's another one that like, I start out, okay, right. And then I got really sad and I was like, oh, all right, we're okay now. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy good storytelling. Like you've been a part of so many great projects, like standby is really intense. And City yeah. of Lights is weird and different. Wes Anderson, Ian, I loved it. Just yeah, nice. that was that was that was a that was a fun one. Did you did you happen to catch one two three? You please. No, where's that one? Uh, it's actually uh, there's a link to it on my Instagram page, which is at Max Magpie. But it is uh, the short film that I produced what? that my husband wrote and my husband directed it. Writing it and down right now. It is a love story ish, but it's it, so it can make Day me in the life of a girl with some pretty severe OCD. And that's oh actually one I'm really proud of. Ooh, done. I'm immediately going to watch it. That's yeah. it. You're in it. Your husband worked on it because he's also an incredible actor. I'm, I'm in. I'm sold. I'm sold. <laughs> that's not like for one person to have that much range. It seems inhuman to me. That is one of the kindest things. Thank you, you so know. much for saying that. You know, it's just I, I'm trying to figure I, you out. That I well. <laughs> Fuck, please do, because yeah. <laughs> I've actually had agents in my life tell me that, I mean, not, not who are my agents now, yeah. uh, tell me that it's actually super hard for them to pitch me sometimes because I don't do one thing. And I, in, in so many different, you know, I have my hair different colors and, and one, two, three, you please, it's ice blue. And, uh, you know, I had a manager basically be like, well, why would you make something where you don't look pretty? And I was like, what? what the fuck? Have you met a character? What the <laughs> fuck? So what the actual fuck did you just say to me? For real. Um, and I think I professionally was like, ah, this is one of those moments where I, I don't think that we belong together on Damn a team. Right. Um, but you know, actually had this this agent early on be like, here, you know, like you're funny and you do comedy, but you also do drama. And like, I just don't know where to put you. And oh when you keep, you know, changing your hair color, people don't like, they don't know where to place you. And I was like, how about in a fucking role? <laughs> I don't know. Yes. Yes. You just like, uh, does everything need to be an offshoot? And, and, and again, you know, I also, there's an incredible casting director who I've had the privilege to work for before and, and, you know, screen tested for on multiple times. And, and she let me in on a little secret. She's like, you know, there are roles where you do need the essence of the character, right? Sure. She was like some, especially in theater, like it's really hard to fake a theater performance in the sense that if there isn't some part of your, your essence, and she's like, I know that sounds woo woo, but like if there isn't some part of your essence that can, can connect to this person, then it's going to be a little put on. And, and I mean, totally, my God, I think it's important to do a myriad of different roles, especially while you're, you know, training, Yes. Um, and hopefully you're always in training, but there are certain roles that like fit and that just lock into you. And there are other roles where you're like, well, I think I was mostly on top of that, or I really try. It just didn't, you know, it didn't, it didn't light up the way that I wanted it to, but that was really interesting. And I'm glad I got to explore it. Right. Um, but I feel like so much of Hollywood right now is checking boxes. And if you yes. don't fit your box and they don't know where to put you, there is this like, I don't know, this button up suit mentality that if we don't know where you go, then you don't have a place. Isn't that weird? It's so like, fucked. In a creative field to be by the numbers makes no sense to me. No. Like what? It's like the people put, calling anywhere. the shots aren't necessarily the creatives and they're doing these yeah. things with algorithms that don't actually make sense. Yeah. You know, just because one person was on a talented TV show doesn't mean they're going to be good in this other television show that they're actually not the right person for. And then uh -huh. they think that all of their quote unquote fans are going to follow them. And that's not how it works at all. You know, you look at something like Modern Family and like, sure, we all loved Al Bundy. Right. Yep. But like, yep. were we going to watch him in Modern Family? Like, no, we've watched yeah. <laughs> Modern Family because it was a genius show written yep. so well. And sure. Sure, we've seen Julie Bowen and an Adam Sandler movie or two, but like that's not the reason you were watching it. Like, no, people watched the show and it won so many awards because it was fucking phenomenal. Yes. You know, and, and the same thing with like Fleabag or or just shows yes. that they're, like, they're undeniable. You don't need a quote unquote famous person or a name to have them be amazing. I agree. I agree. 
And that's also super frustrating from the performer side because like you being so multifaceted, it's like, I don't know where to, where to put you anywhere. <laughs> you fit in all of the roles. Just, just put it in the box. Like, well, oh, the rapper is not what we need, though. I'm like, it's not, <laughs> it's not about the rapper. It's about the candy bar. All right. All right. Fine. Fine. I'm fine. We're fine. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, that, and that's another thing, too. Like, I, I love the fact that I get to be a chameleon and I, yes. you know, the, the one giveaway I, I like to think is my voice for the most part. I can change it a little bit, but, mm-hmm. you know, I, it's very specific. You know, most sure. people like, yeah, I was watching the show and I, I looked away and then I was like, holy shit, that was Alex because they could hear my voice, not because, you know, they actually, quote unquote, recognized me, which I sure. think is the job of yeah. the fucking actor, <laughs> you know, but I think you're right. I think you're right. And, and I love when all of that comes together for somebody like yourself with a role like Sadie Adler. I mean, <sighs> come on. That's that's one of those things where it's almost destiny that like you were meant for this role. I cannot express enough times how valuable that entire experience has been continues to be and how Sadie Adler is my favorite character to date. I understand. I, (sighs) that human lives in my, in my, in my soul. Like she, she does. And I, oh man, I mean, what a role and what, what, I mean, just what kudos, an arc kudos yeah kudos to the writers truly because yes. there were so many uh, cliches that that could have been a, a pitfall of her absolutely arc. And, and they didn't i mean holy shit none of them yeah none at of them. all at the time people don't know that like who, who sadie is in in that it's sadie in chapter two when you when you oh meet. for sure it takes like a couple playthroughs or somebody read about it to be like, Oh my God, that was the same. That was the same person. (laughs) Yeah, for real. And and it takes an actress with the kind of skill and talent that you have to do that. Cause I don't think anyone, I don't think just anyone can do that. I think that's really hard to play a character through an arc like that in one project. You know, it's not like you had 10 years of every day on a sitcom to do something like this. Granted you had years, but it's still, it's such an accomplishment of a performance that's so beautiful and nuanced. It, there, there's a reason it's sticking around. Oh, well, thank you. It, it was it was a really interesting thing. I think people are surprised to hear that my first two years on the on the game, I really didn't even know that Sadie was a major character and I didn't know oh. her arc at all. Like we actually did the beginning stuff at the beginning. So really? I got a call. I show up to Rockstar headquarters because everything was so top secret. I had no idea what I was auditioning for. I didn't even know what to do. I thought by the NDAs and like how top secret everybody was being, I was like, oh, it's got to be something for Apple. You know, like, yeah, sure. Okay. And I then got told to report to Rockstar headquarters and add somebody who played Grand Theft Auto uh, and loved video games, particularly in college. I was... I mean, just geeking out, just like, oh, this is so fucking cool. <laughs> and like, also then couldn't tell a single soul. And I was like, you have to be kidding me. Come on, and, you know? Um, but I, I get to set and, you know, we do things and you, and you learn when you're doing uh, motion capture. And I'm, I'm sure because you've interviewed some, some other of my, my gang, mm-hmm. um, you know, we did mostly motion capture performance and yep. we have full facial recognition and, and these crazy cameras in our faces. And it's basically doing theater in the round yeah. versus what I did on Legend of Korra, which was just my voice, you know? Sure. Um, so we're really like performing. And I was like, well, I'm sorry. What? I'd never, I'd never fucking done a video game before. I'm like, T-pose? What, what's a T-pose? <laughs> like, huh? like, what do we do? What? <laughs> and I didn't get another call for, I feel like almost six months. And wow. so I thought it was just like, okay, cool. I did this little part in a thing. And then maybe, or maybe it could have been bigger and they didn't like me. Like I, I didn't know sure. what to make it. And then I had like two weeks in a row. And it was like, okay, but unlike a film, you know, we don't get the whole script. We have no idea, you know, when, when you have a film, sure, you, you shoot out of sequence and that's not problematic if you do your work and you have your system and you know, what comes before and what after, and that's how you can, and you can really 
orchestrate your performance to have, you know, this nuance and, and decide which notes you want to hit when, and, you know, all totally. that. Jazz. And this, we're kind of like flying by the seat of our pants wow. because I definitely didn't know how amazing she was going to become. And I, I mean, it was just, it was just wild. It makes you so present in the moment. And then I, I, you know, I remember by like year three sitting across from Ben and Roger and, and, you know, Rob being like, can I see your sides? Can I, can I, can I read your <laughs> little context? Crazy NDAs. And so the only way to fucking gain any more information is to read what anybody else has. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're not given any more information than that. And so um, you know, I, it's funny. I love all the females I got to work with as well, but for the first, I mean, honestly, maybe the first four years I was mostly working with the guys. Oh, and wow. So, well, I mean, I, I have, you know, some beautiful scenes with Abigail, but like one-on-one -on -one with the other females, not so much. True. True. Sadie's out there doing her own thing, showing the yeah. boys up in a lot of ways. Sure. <laughs> That's wild. What a great, how long did you work on it? about five years. Wow. Yeah. It's but very off and on, you know, it was like, sure. you'd have, sometimes there'd be like two, three months of a lot of work. And then another time, you know, it would be like three or four months of nothing. Sure. And then, uh, there were a couple of times where bizarrely and unfortunately I wasn't able to be there. And so they had a stand in, but what's interesting is I think we redid everything that, I wasn't able to be there for like, right. Sure. Like when my mother passed away, I was, I was like, I, 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 yeah, can't of course right now. And they, I mean, rockstar is a family. I cannot be more superlative about how I speak uh, to my experience with that company, with the people that worked there with the actors that I, I call my like dear friends, we're all on a text chain and we, I yeah. mean, I swear to God, it's almost daily. Um, <laughs> it's, you know, like I, I love these humans and I am forever grateful and bound to them through this just insane experience of creating this piece of art that, you know, even if you're not a gamer, it's like fucking watching a movie. Yeah. It's so beautiful. And Roger Clark just deserves. Oh my God everything. Yes. I mean, that man is a force. Yes. That's a great word that I think that's, I have not heard it heard him better described than a force. It, yeah. yeah. It, I mean, that's, that's the, when you get to the real pulp of like performance and art and like acting, I think Red Dead is one of those things that has the perfect marriage of like a beautiful, like nuanced, heartbreaking story with the caliber of cast that can tell that level of a story. It's great. It's a great, it's great to be on this side where I just get to enjoy it. Oh man. Well, what was your favorite part? Oh man. See, I'm, I'm with you. I like to feel, you know, so it was the whole finding out. I, so a little context, I'm not a gamer for me. I get, I have ADD. So I, okay, it, takes, it takes Welcome. a lot. To Welcome to the yes. tribe. <laughs> Indeed. You have the tattoo as well. <laughs> <laughs> It's one of those things that like, it takes a lot to keep me invested. I get bored really, really easily. Mm -hmm. um, so if there's something like I'm a big Star Wars fan, so that usually brings me in. I'm also a big fan of the Old West. So I was already like, all right, cool, cool. I'm, I'm in. Let's do this. I was not expecting what Red Dead had for me. <laughs> so like the interrelationships, but finding out when Arthur got tuberculosis was, was one of those moments where I was like, oh, no, there's there, no, no, there's no way. They're not going to do this. There's no way. You know, because I'm also one of those that like when I'm invested, I leave no house unopened. I'm yeah. open in every cabinet. Like I've spent some time with Arthur Morgan. <laughs> yeah. So when you find out, I was like, oh, oh, wow. And just the whole fallout with Dutch and the performances that Ben gave and Sadie's story is it, honestly, it's one of the stories that sticks out of the game because you don't recognize her <laughs> from where she started to where she ends. And then in the mm -hmm. epilogue, after Arthur's gone, Sadie comes back and is like, hey, we still got some work to do. It's like, this is incredible. It's a gift that keeps on giving. Yeah. Um, so right right after uh, when he got tuberculosis, there's a, there's a moment, well, I guess a little farther down the road, when he has a scene with the nun. That's, oh. pro that's probably my favorite because she pretty much, he explains to her that like, I'm not a good man. 
And she basically turns it back on him and is like, I think you are because everything I've seen you do is good. And you have a choice. You know, you're dying, but there's still time. And it mm -hmm. was just one of those scenes that I'm like, wow, the, cal mm -hmm. the caliber of performance we're getting here is just I would never expect it from a video game because I just didn't know. Right. It's just gorgeous. Gorgeous. All yeah, Rockstar yes, really, really just paves the way. Like every time you think like, wow, that was amazing. And I've heard, you know, other games are amazing, right? Like yep. Last of Us, like I, I hear oh. nothing but amazing things. I hear, yep. you know, there's, there's the, there's a lot of beautifully crafted video game experiences out there. And I, I yes. turn that because, you know, also like I used to love playing Mario Kart and, and whatever. Yeah, of course. Else, you know, of like, course. Sure. Um, but I swear Rockstar does something else and it it separates itself from the pack. And you know a Rockstar game. Yep. Because yep. it is not a it's a world. It You're is. You're in a world. And you, you know, the, the Comic Cons that we've been at, I, I can't tell you how many times people have been like, I did not expect to cry. Yes. And like, what, honestly, what a gift, because so many people need permission nowadays and crying, like being vulnerable is the strongest thing you can do and be and, and to allow yourself that human emotion is, well, you're human. I don't know when it became, you know, just common, common for everyone to say, like, don't cry, hold it in, suck it up, be, you know, be a man, quote unquote, yep. like, put some dirt on it. Yeah. Right. Like, yep. like doing these bizarre antiquated gender bullshit things on things and like yep. that's not what's up like Agreed. nothing is more beautiful than when marlon brando cries yeah like what are we what you know like, <laughs> and also again that's a shared human experience like i don't yes. know one fucking person that hasn't had water come out of their eyes yep you yep. know it makes you human not not weak or or whatever anyways the fact that this uh story could affect so many people and uh, allow them to emote and to actually feel is just so i mean wow they're yeah. and it's yeah. just so beautiful i mean i i can't i i just i i it never ceases to amaze me that you know zeros and ones can somehow yeah it's like AI thing where you have personal responsibility that if you kill something, it like rots when you come back to it and doesn't just like disappear. Yes. Or if you treat people badly in town, everybody's going to change their tune and how they treat you. Like, how do they do that? They're magicians. Right. I agree. It's because I have the lifeblood of you guys as the backbone. <laughs> that's, how this, that's how this works. It's that human element. Do you, do you have a favorite scene when you think back on it? I have scenes that were super fun to shoot. Mm -hmm. I have scenes that were, you know, meaningful and powerful. I think the last time I, I speak to Arthur is like, Ooh, is really yeah. emotional. Um, but, you know, Rob and, and, and I had so much fun. I bet. Our scenes in the F log, like I, we had a little dance we did when we'd get it in one <laughs> page, you know, like. Yes. It was also just really cool to, you know, knowing the history and the legacy of this game, be like kind of bossing John Marston. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. He needs it sometimes. Yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. You know, don't we all just a little yeah. bit? I mean, Sadie doesn't like it, but, you know. That's true. I, I, hey, speaking of unmistakable voices, goodness gracious. If Rob <laughs> orders anything anywhere, everyone's going to know John Marston's here. Oh, it's, it's, I mean, it's like the, the, <laughs> the ongoing joke, you know, Raj and I like have our, our, it's our voices, but you know, the different dialects and like different, right. you know, we turn it on a little bit of a different way. I get like a little more gruff Alex. It's like Alex after, you know, a couple too many whiskeys. Yeah. yeah. Whatever, uh, and, you know, obviously people are always shocked when they hear Roger's little <laughs> accent and yeah. then you hear Rob and Rob. <laughs> Rob's John, John, Rob, who, huh? That's you right. Know, it's, like, it's, like, it's like, I can't even do it. It's so good. That's right. Oh, what you see is what you get. <laughs> oh, it's so true. Great. It's so good. What was there anything like, because uh, you strike me as the kind of person, as well as relationships, you take from experiences of shoots coming out of the other side, like, oh, I learned this 
about the craft or about yourself? Was there something in Red Dead that you like took away and used later? Hmm. You know, I I got to learn. Well, that's a that's a great question. I mean, it's such a particular medium that also requires all of these other mediums. Right. But, you know, being able to do theater and and like thank God for that and and film because I, I mean it's it's everything, but it's its own brand of right uh, medium. And um, you know, one thing. I feel like on that job, because I got to live with this character for, for so long. Um, I remember, I think the only time that I ever was like, I don't want to say that. And they were like, oh. what? I think they, they had me saying the word bitch and okay, whatever. It's, it's a word. It's not my favorite word. I just don't, it doesn't like electrify anything. I just feel sure. like it's a little bit pejorative in this way that, you know, isn't, it's just, just it's a boring it, fucking word to me. It falls flat. Yeah. Yeah. It, for me, like, uh, you know, totally. I just, don't, I just don't love it. Like I, again, I, I lived in England for a bit. So, you know, there are other words uh, <laughs> that I prefer because they elicit a feeling and yeah. they are maybe a little more shocking to some, yeah, yeah. but like the word bitch, like cunt has a, as a, yeah. Couple of definitions. Absolutely. And um, also everybody knows what you fucking mean when you say that word. <laughs> and, it's true. You it's know, got teeth. Oh, it's got teeth. Exactly. And I, love and I it. love that. Um, and so I had been, you know, living as Sadie for so long and, and I was saying the word bitch. I was like, Sadie would, and it's not just Alex's preference. Cause I I've, you know, thanks to enough training and whatever I can divorce the two. Totally. Um, but I was like, Sadie would never say the word bitch. It's <laughs> not it, you know, like, I, I, I don't know why it's too, I, yeah. it's just not it. And so I kept pitching them the word. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like maybe we, we found a different version of the way to say it, but I just felt so strongly that I didn't want to say the word bitch. And yeah. if I could say it with teeth in it and we needed like, then there, there had to be some other way. And so I think we got pretty creative, um, in a couple different situations because I just, it didn't, it didn't feel authentic to, to Sadie and, you know, yeah. um, Sadie needs to be Sadie, you know, full Sadie. Most yes. of the time. it's just, yeah. You just need a shirt full Sadie. Um, well, I'll, never, always yeah. go full Sadie. <laughs> full Sadie terrified a few people at the end of the epilogue when <laughs> I, so I always request on, on shoots, if you have the time, and, you know, it's not putting people out money because time is money on sets. Um, yep. But if they ever ask, like, would you like to do one more? Like we have it, it's in the bag. Sometimes, sometimes a director will say like, do you want to do one more? And so I call it the fuck it take. Hell and yeah. the fuck it take is when, you know, you get to be a little more creative, maybe a little bit more out there than you would otherwise be. And uh, we were doing a specific scene that has to do with some vengeance yes and i asked and you know it's really emotional so mind you like i'm already sore because you know the stabbing motion isn't something that i do on my regular <laughs> uh, you know, workouts sure uh, it's pretty specific and it is a lot of micro movements and mm -hmm. it you know takes a lot of force and i'm fucking crying and snotting and all the shit's happening in the scene and uh, our incredible director, Rod Edge, was like, okay, you know, I, I, I think we got it. And he's, you know, <laughs> and he's, I'm like, oh, you know, could, and he's like, Alex, you want to do it again? And I was like, yeah, I would love to, if that's okay. I was like, I kind of just want to go full Sadie. And he gets the smile on his face. He's like, full Sadie, huh? What's full Sadie going to be? <laughs> and I went, you just call action. Put your goggles you on. Goes and he calls action. And I mind you, like most everyone, I think there were two, maybe three females total on set uh, during the scene. Mm -hmm. um, and I let's just say <laughs> there is a famous trial uh, about Lorena Bobbitt. And let's uh -huh. just say I had full Sadie get her vengeance on someone who had violated her in a really, really graphic way. Also, like I'm, <laughs> I've got like a foam knife and it's a dummy of a human. 
you know, like <laughs> it's actually not like this is just all rubber and, and make believe and it's foam and whatever. Probably best. I am snotting, crying. I am screaming bloody murder. And I am just taking full <laughs> safety vengeance on this thing. And Rod Edge yells cut. And I, as I T pose, cause you got to end with the T pose as well. I look at everyone and all of the men, which is almost everyone on set, <laughs> including Rod, like just jaws are on the floor. <laughs> and I'll, and, and <laughs> Rod goes, Alex, uh, you know, I'm not even doing his accent, but he was like, you know, that was, that was quite a take. We're not going to be able to use it, <laughs> but I'm glad I got to see what full Sadie was. And I don't think I ever want to see it again. <laughs> Oh my God. It was like you could just feel everyone, like everyone's necks and shoulders were just so tense and clenched. Sure. It was, I'm like, you know, again, tears streaming down, snot. I'm like, well, was it good though? Yeah. <laughs> oh, good thing you did that like at the end, because then oh, yeah. there's nothing oh, yeah. gets done after that. They're too afraid. <laughs> Yeah, Alex, we want to, we want to, we want to calibrate real soon. If you want to T, if you want, if you want to T pose, you can or not. It's cool. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, can't, can't use it. It's fine. Uh, I don't know. Do we keep that? Do we keep that? Right, yeah. Can I have that? Is there a way that where I can just get that? <laughs> it was, it was wild, but you know, again, like that character, I'm just, I'm so grateful to have, have played such an interesting person and also to have gotten to you know, especially during that time in the West, like to play such a progressive character where yes. she's treated like an equal, she is not in relation to a male, you know, she's not a love interest. She's not yeah. a mother. She's not a, I mean, she has a husband, sure, but like they're equals in their relationships. She's not somebody's wife. Yes. She is her own autonomous fucking badass. Hell yeah. And pulls it. herself up like a phoenix from the ashes. You know, it's, it's, um, She's just, and then starts her own fucking business, man. Like, come yeah. on. Yeah. It's so Damn cool. Right. <laughs> Dream roll. Dream roll. Damn. Oh, man. The first time I saw once, you know, Rockstar started rolling out some of the, um, some of the publicity for it, mm -hmm. I flew to New York because somebody said, I'm pretty sure I just saw your face on the subway. And, uh -huh. and again, I've never been in a film that was big enough. Like, you know, I'm not in a franchise or whatever. I don't know how I'd feel seeing my actual face, but I think, be, you know, maybe I would be as excited. I, I don't know, sure. but I think particularly because this is like an avatar of me. And even though it's very much my fucking face and very much like me, yeah, not necessarily like there was enough of a, a, a distance there where I got to be this like gleeful fan oh, and cool. just so excited fangirling about a character that I was obsessed with that I also just happened to play if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, like, absolutely. It was so fucking cool. That's awesome. Man, I'm so glad you got to experience that as well. That's the thing about like roles like this. It's a gift for the performer and it's a gift for the audience because it's that cycle. You know what I mean? It's great. Great. Yeah, time. and I think, you know, again, I I doing comic cons has been really eye opening for me. Yeah. Um, but it's been very cool because I don't feel like people are coming when they see me to like, they're not my fan. It's like, we're connecting because we're both fans of the game. Like yeah. I'm an actual fan of this game. Sure. It's, it's such a special piece of art. And so, you know, I, again, I'll, I'll always have this, but I remember feeling so uncomfortable in the very beginning thinking about like, I don't like what, like, but people pay money to talk to me. Like what? No, yeah. that's like why sure. would they do that? You know? And it's not, I don't know. It, it, it's been actually a very, very cool experience. And I, you know, I'm so grateful to connect to all the people that love something I love and that, you know, want to exalt and, and just cherish this character that I too am obsessed with, you know, it's, it's very, it's yeah, it's a really special world. I'm I'm very grateful to be a part of it. Yes, absolutely. So for somebody that's done so many things, like do you have any advice then for like people who want to be actors and are kind of getting their feet wet? Oh man, so much advice. Uh, where to begin? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I would say, okay, first and foremost, know why you're doing it. Like Smart. if you're doing it because you want to explore other 
people, uh, their experiences, cool. If you're doing it because you love to storytell, cool. If you're doing it to, you know, honestly, like give yourself an outlet, cool. If you're trying to be famous, yeah, oh man, be a TikTok <laughs> star. Yeah, like, that's right. Be an influencer. Be you something know, else. There's something. This is an actual art form, and it's a real craft, and it's a hard fucking job. If you're yes. doing it, right. you know, like it, in the in the best way. It's so rewarding, but it it is not for the faint of heart. And I cannot. If you are a super healthy person, and by that I mean constantly working on yourself, taking classes, challenging yourself in other ways, reading fucking watching films, educating yourself. Yes. Like seriously, I'm talking like, I don't care if you're a big fucking brutish dude, go take ballet class, like uh, figure out your dreams, cry every day for a long time, play other characters. Like you in live, you're doing this to validate your own ego in the same way. I think it's why people want to be famous. Like, mm -hmm. well, man, just, save yourself some time. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just yeah. don't. There's easier don't. roads than that. <laughs> yeah. Find something else. I don't know, but like uh, be a reality star, I, which isn't my thing. I'll, I'll never see it, but you know, yep, it's never get some people happy, I guess. Yeah, I agree. That uh, means. <laughs> but you know, like this is, this is a real art form. And I, I think that, you know, saying yes to doing plays, to taking parts, to honestly, if you really want to be like a film and TV actor, like get other jobs on a set, learn, learn every facet. Yes. You know, make, make your own stuff fall on your face. Make sure that you have a little collective of humans that will give you honest advice. And sometimes that means somebody saying, yeah, it was okay. It's not your strongest work. And then go from there. And if you can't take constructive criticism, again, Ooh. find another fucking path. It's just, yeah, there is, it's not fluff, you know, like it's it, people work their whole lives. Like you see somebody like Leonardo DiCaprio or Christian Bale or Kate Blanchett or Olivia like uh like octavia spencer um oh my god olivia coleman there we go sorry yep. my brain you know hiccuped both great uh, yeah you know idris alba you're like they're fucking actors yes they've done everything i get like lit up when i i see that you know mads mckelson is doing another film like these yes. are people that just you know wow like there there's i agree Wow. And, and they didn't just go, yeah, I want to be an actor. Why? Because I wanted to be famous. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not what happened. You know, they, yeah. they take classes. They, and I know this because I've been in class with some of them. Like, you know, like they, <laughs> it doesn't matter that they're huge fucking stars. They still train with amazing humans. Like you were in constant process. And, you know, people say things like life is a, it's about the road it's or it's the journey it's not the destination but like so too should be your art form yes and yeah i agree i think that's great advice too because that's another thing i feel like a lot of people don't talk about acting's really hard oh, man. <laughs> and it, being rejected all the time is really hard yes yes it's 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 not the glam it's not the it's not how that works at all <laughs> no and what's funny is like even when the glam is happening there's an insecurity that it breeds too, because you, yes. you know, how higher you go up, the longer the fall down. And it's not that it's just, it's nothing's owed. Nothing is, is, you know, you can't, you're not entitled to yes. success. And I think a lot of people think that, you know, like uh, everyone I know who has worked in this industry a long time, myself included, you get a role and you're like, this is going to be the thing that propels me a little bit further. Of or course. this is going to be a wave I'm able to ride. And I'm sorry, the waters are fucking, you're just, <laughs> there's no current, man. Like yep. you're just a fucking sitting duck in tepid water that's pretty murky. And you can see that there's some shit going on over there and, and nobody bringing a boat to you. And you're like, yeah, what is this true. happening? <laughs> you know, it's so fucking hard. And then other times 
you know, I, I should have known, but I didn't know um, the degree to how successful Red Dead would be. Like, I just, we didn't, you know, we worked on it so long, we had to keep it under wraps. We couldn't talk about it. Sure. I, I maybe just put it in the back place of my mind. And so when it blew up, you know, it's been such a beautiful ride, but I would be lying to say that I got offers since then because of it. Right. It doesn't matter that I've won an award for it. It doesn't like, it really doesn't it, like, I'm not doing other video games yet. The offers aren't coming in. I'm still auditioning for every single thing I do. Totally. And, you know, I am kind of cool to a really niche group of humans. And for that, I am so, so thankful. I really am, you know, like, it's so much fun to share such a deep love of something with somebody else. And yes. you know, that's anything, again, it's that connectivity amongst us, like however we can connect. And, and if it's over Red Dead, I mean, the stories, some of the stories that I've been told, like I'm, I did not expect to be like hysterically crying at my booth while I talked to a right. woman, that, <laughs> you know, that Red Dead got her through her treatments for her disease or yeah. this father and daughter who had never connected before and were able to connect over this game. And now they have like a standing date. And I was like, I'm mean, weeping, you know, like this is the shit that this is why we do what we do. Like you said, it's to have people feel things, experience things to connect us and to hopefully open our humanity a little bit. And I, I just think that, you know, also my last piece of advice, if you, if you're not really passionate about it, really, really passionate in the sense that you will cry, laugh, be overjoyed, elated. Like I'm talking like full, full, full feelings. Then don't, don't do that. Like find yourself a hobby that you feel that way about and you do your job, you know, to support the hobby. Cause acting is something that, you know, again, I I've been a bartender for five and a half years. I've, um, and again, I've been working since I was five. I have been a personal assistant. I've worked at clothing stores. I started another company for a minute. Like I, you know, I, you're, you gotta be a hustler. Yes. Nothing is guaranteed. <laughs> Absolutely. It's true. It's true. I think that's great advice. I think it's important advice more so that people, you know, and for somebody like you, who's an incredible performer, there's that, there's that work, you know, over, overnight success is 10 years in the making kind of stuff. Get in because you love it and keep fighting. Shit, I've been doing this for, and I think <laughs> yeah. on my card it says 25 years. I'm not kidding. Wait, maybe, maybe 30. Oh God, how old am I? Anyways, yeah. right. you know. but again, just do what you love and surround yourself with people that will help you grow and push you and, and keep taking classes and pushing yourself because, you know, if nothing else, hopefully it just makes you a kinder, more compassionate, better human. Absolutely. And just yeah. like that, we've been talking for over an hour and a half, Alex. No, we haven't. No, you we survived. haven't. We have. Hey, oh. hey, 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 you did it. You survived. Well, you're a treat, man. <laughs> oh, Thank you for it. having me on your show. And also <laughs> kudos to like doing it so formally. Yeah. I feel like you, like my agent was like, uh, are you available? And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> obviously, you know, I am. What? That's right. I'm not here to play games, Alex. <laughs> I see that. Well, well, I mean, hats off and, and you know, I mean, is it past? It's past noon. Cheers. That's right. Cheers. <laughs> I, we're Irish. And there's no, there's no clock for this. <laughs> but before I let you go, I got to ask, uh, where can people find you online? Your stuff? Talk to me. Okay. Um, yeah. So, so hopefully keep looking out. I mean, I, I, the only social media that I enjoy that I use uh, is Instagram. Love it. I'm at Max Magpie. That's M-A-X-M-A-G-P-I-E on Instagram. Um, and from there, I will update everyone, but hopefully coming out with Good Grief, The Gains of Loss, this podcast I've been working on. I've got links to the short film that I was in and produced. Um, I have a couple other things that are coming out, a, a film that I just did a couple months ago called Doula, directed Ooh. by none other than Cheryl Nichols. Well, uh, well, well starring yeah Troy and Belsario, Will Greenberg and uh Aaron Shriver. Dude. Cameo with uh Chris Pine and myself. What? Um, that'll be fun. And uh yeah, you know, again, it's covid covid was rough for I'm pretty sure most people. Uh-huh. Um, uh-huh. 
And so, you know, work kind of went by the wayside. I was, I was fortunate enough to do some audio books. Um, so Hell yeah, this, this voice y'all, you can look me up on audible. Get it. Uh, I've done all the different genres of different books. Um, recently did one of my best friend's memoirs called Stray uh, that is out. I think paperback is out today and it um, actually features me a little bit uh, as me, the human inside her memoir, because again, she's my best friend since college. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I'm like, you've been saying, I'm kind of here and there everywhere and n- nowhere. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you know, of uh, course doing the damn thing. I'm, you know, man, it's all, I just keep moving forward. It's so much about resilience and just keeping yourself creative and, yeah, it's just getting getting it all getting all done, keeping yourself entertained and moved and connected and that's true. That's what we do as artists, right? That's all you can do. That's all you can do. I love it. Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. You can also find me at BrianBalance.com. There you'll find all my demos and a bunch of other fun stuff. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. A good rating or review always helps and is greatly appreciated. Let the people know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch! Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to get you some sweet gear. Also, I've got a Patreon, so if you'd like to support the show more directly, you now have that option over at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Chris, Ben, Jim, Daz, Kelly, Daryl, Xavier, and Victor. Your support means so, so much, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.